Good morning, good morning, good morning. And let all the people of God say, Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad. Glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Evangelist Candace is on with us always. And as always, thank you, baby, for getting the music for us. Amen. Who else is out there? All right. George Goodman. How are you doing, brother George? Look, well, we're so sorry to hear about your sister, uh, uh, Bob, and we're praying for you and your family. Amen. We're going to lift you up, and thank you for, for tuning up. Amen. Let us know if we can do anything for you. Grace, how you doing in Knoxville? Amen. To all of God's children, we say amen, amen. Thank for tuning in. Chief, how you and Kara? Uh, uh, <laughs> how y'all doing down there, Chief? Amen. Out of May, how you doing? Amen. All right. Brenda, our niece in uh, Chicago is, is watching. Amen. How you, everything in Chicago? Amen. To God be the glory for the thing that he had done. Pee Wee is out of St. Louis. Amen. Over in uh, Arkansas. How you doing, niece? Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all. Hey, man, this is a great day to be alive. I know you say any day is a great day to be alive. Janice D, teacher down at the fort. How you doing, Sister D? Amen. Pee-wee says she called it the Lou. Say everything is all right in the Lou, St. Louis. Richard, how you doing, nephew? God bless you. Thank you for tuning in with us. Amen. Let's see if we got any music start up this morning. Dr. Badger, Dr. Tara, how you this morning? Amen. Let's see who we got here. Uh, Cooling Water. Who's that? The William Brother? Amen. Let's see. We got the Cooling Water from Grandma Well. The William Brothers here. All right. Christy Woofer. Now we go Cooling Water. Give me a sound check, somebody. Give me a sound check. William Brothers, cooling water. Chief Diffman, you and Claire doing all right? Thank you so much for your support and tuning in. All right, let's continue to pray for our church member there and our family there. How many of you need that cooling water? How many of you? Older? Elijah William, Nick, how you doing there? All right, classmate, Major Judy. All right. Shout out to class of 73. Rosa Ford High School class of 1973. All right. List your class date there. If you're so inclined, go ahead and list your class date out there. We'll give you a shout out the day you graduate. Barbara Dye, how you this morning, sister? Cooling water. <laughs> how many of y'all know what a pump is? Have you? Yeah, okay, old enough to remember going to a pump or to a whale. And so much pain. Couldn't see no sunshine. Nothing but rain. Leonard Conway, little brother, how you doing down there in Lula? Class of 73, who we got? Joe Canada, Carolyn Canada, Elijah, Dot Dunn, Dot Jackson, Paul, how you doing? Cat. Bobby, how you doing, Mother Cat? Stephanie Calhoun, good morning. How you doing, Stephanie? Cooling water. Lee Williams, the Williams brother. Cooling water. Caledon, Chicago, how you doing? As always, go ahead and put your prayer request down in the uh, comment box there. Lifting up the good Goodman family. Special prayer for Bob Bond. Let me get my prayer list here. Oh, uh, who we got here? Continue to lift up Pastor Nelson. Elder B and Pratt, Sharon Hodges, how you doing? Praying for you. Uh, Pastor J.C. Smith. All right. Uh, Deacon Bobby Bond, Deacon Adam Bond. Tony Bowman, how you doing? Uh, praying for Tony. Look, Joe in Germany, praying for you. Nigel um, Adam Bond, Brother Clyde Jenkins, Mother Dar Lara, Mother Lori Hubbard, Mother Catherine Smith, Mother Eunice Thomas, Mother Ethel Jones, Mother Marjorie Hibbler. 
all right? Praying for Yelene, Craig Harris, Shirley Harris, uh, Mary Stewart, Judy Conway, Major Conway, Ernestine Webb, my sister in St. Louis, William Conway, Melvin Conway, Sharon Conway, Diane Miller, May France Cotton, Sandra Caney, Leon Conway, not Jackson classmate, how you doing? Praying for Kevin Robertson, loss of his wife Judy. So continue to lift that, lift him and his family up. Robert Dow, we see you praying for your sister Barbara. Look, Joe, how's everything over there in Germany? Let me back that up, and we're going to pray here. All right. All right, back that up a little bit. Sister Esther, Willie May, how you doing? All right. Jay Cotton, we praying for him, lifting her up. Amen. All right, let Joe give a thumbs up. Let me turn it down just a little bit, and we do our morning prayer. Set me free. Cooling water. Let us pray. Francis, Francine, we're praying for you. Amen. Ed Lucas, oh, oh, army buddy from Fort Seal. Down the, down the Mississippi Road there. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank and praise you for life, for health, and for strength. So much to be thankful for. We realize that we just don't thank you enough. So we lift up holy hand, giving you all praise, all honor, and all glory. Come now, Lord Jesus, with mercy. Come now with grace. You've seen the prayer list is growing longer and longer and longer. Just touch, Lord God, as only you can. Heal as only you can. Restore. Special prayer, special prayer for, for, for Bob, Lord God, and in health and in feet and everything. Praying for the Goodman family and all those that are the Robinson family, all those that have law. We're praying for the COVID, Lord God, that we take that vaccine and have some form of protection. Now bless us. Keep us. Pray that all that we do and all that we say be pleasing in our sight. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Praying for you, Dale Williams. How you doing? God bless you. Lift up Pastor Nelson over the new sign. Amen. Cooling water. How you doing, Francine? Thank you for your contribution. Amen. Thank all you that sold into this ministry. How many of you love that cooling water? Cooling water. Karen is watching with us this morning. Lee Williams, the Williams brother. Cooling water. Have you been dipped? Herbert Shack Banks, lost of his sister, class of 1968. Thank the uh, sister Doc. We're praying for you, dear. Took you down. Took you down to be baptized. What happened? You had love. Amen. All right, just a little bit more than we get on with this morning here. Amen. In the name of the Son, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Holy Ghost, and the All Made One. James Hudson, how you doing, sir? Glad you could tune in with us this morning. All right, that was Lee Williams and Lee Williams, brother, cooling water. Amen. Lee Williams, the Williams, brother, cooling water from Grandma Well. Amen. Continue in our series about Moses. Amen. About Moses. All right. Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. Amen. Okay, tomorrow, uh, uh, one February, we start Black History Month. Amen. Amen. James Williams, bless you too, sir. How you doing? So we're going to start some, some Black History, a series on, on Black History, biblical, all right, and related to Black History. Okay, Exodus chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Chastity is waiting. I believe that's Sister Gladys. How you doing? Exodus chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel. All right. 
let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, the God of Hebrews has met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey to the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Least he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye Moses and Aaron let the people from their work get you to your burden? And Pharaoh said, All right. Behold, the people of the land now are many, and you make them rest from their burden. Amen. We, we definitely pray for this world and those who are suffering from sickness. Uh, thank you, Brother Elijah, classmate. Amen. Just for a, a, a little while, I want to preach from this topic. Go down Moses. Go down Moses. And we probably use the subtitle, Let My People Go. Amen. Go down Moses. Exodus 5, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Now, we all know that go down Moses, or most of us, all right, is in an old Negro spiritual song. It, uh, I, I don't know who the writer was. It's anonymous. As with many of us, it, it, as with many of the slave song, it was a cold song. And it talks about the plan to escape. All right. The, the, uh, the, the plan to escape are encoded in the biblical story and in the, in the slave song. The lyric uh, 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 Go Down Moses referred to Harriet Tubman, a runaway slave who helped hundreds of fellows escape. For Nita Conway, cousin, how you doing? Uh, 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 Harriet Tubman helped a uh, runaway slave that went back and helped hundreds and hundreds of slaves via the Underground Railroad to escape north to their freedom. Her code name was Moses. Amen. Black Moses. All right. We know that song. When Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard, they could not stand. Let my people go. Go down, Moses. Way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Go down, Moses, and tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Good morning, Christopher and Krista, and please, ma'am, please uh, share this message with your friends, with your family, and with your network. Go down, Moses. Tell old Pharaoh, thus said the Lord, let my people go. You see, God's chosen people were being held captive in, in the forced slavery in Egypt land. That was way back then in biblical time. Today, God's people are still being held captive, Katrina. They've been held captive by spiritual wickedness in high places. Oh, my, my, my. Today, Pam Harris, Pryor, how you doing? God bless you. Still lifting you and Brother Chuck Charles up. Today, our people are still in slavery. Megan Jenkins, Mother Thomas, how you doing? Praying for you. We're still enslaved. We're enslaved by poverty. Today, our people are enslaved by drug poverty. We don't have or make enough money to buy the basic necessities. All right? Elma Hudson, God bless you in, in First Lady. Today, we are uh, uh, in part, uh, we are our people still enslaved by drugs and enslaved by alcohol. We still have folks being enslaved by ignorance and, 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 and stupidity. All right? Try hard as you can. My baby girl used to say you can't fix stupid. Dot Donning, how you doing? Karen Friesen, how you doing? All right. You can't fix stupid. All right. Uh, the lack 
a basic need. We don't have the lack of basic need. Ignorance, uh, Brother Courtney, this, uh, 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 keeping us held, enslaved, and in captivity. We crying and we praying and we pleading. God send Moses to tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Very McKinney, I'm uh, glad you could tune in. We crying out to God, telling him to send a savior, send a Moses, and let our people go. Michelle, join in on the podcast. All right. God has already sent us a deliverer to free us from sin. That's all that we have, keeping us in bondage is to sin. And God has already sent us a deliverer from our sin. Let's look at Moses' trip down to Egypt land where he had the nerve, where he had the boldness. Moses had the audacity to go in and not tell, but the man and tell, O Pharaoh, thus said the Lord God, let my people go. Are you being held captive this morning? We're being held captive, folks, waiting on stimulus check. Congress arguing and fighting just because that is what they do. And tomorrow don't look too good. It might even look bleak. But I'm not worried about tomorrow because I know who holds tomorrow in the rest of the day. I know where my help come from. Come out, David, and witness for me out of Psalm number 121. I lift up mine eyes unto the hill, for with coming my help. All my help come from above. And I like that 37 number Psalm, Mother Thomas, where David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor have I seen his seed begging bread. My God shall supply all of your need. Amen. So let's look at Moses as he tripped down to old Egypt land and tell old Pharaoh to let the people go. Dick and Bob, how you doing? Praying for you. All right. Well, we pray we we'll see Moses, the manumitter. All right. Manumit. Just a word that means to uh to release from slavery or servitude. All right, manumit. Moses the manumitter. Moses was chosen by God to deliver his people from the Egyptian servitude and Egyptian slavery. They had been in captivity over 430 years. Sound like us, African-American Negro folk. We had been in slavery in this country over 400 years. And God sent a Moses our way, a man you met up, someone that God had touched the heart to let his people go. Had to go down in Egypt. And it seemed like this country, the United States, is a type of Egypt where we got all kinds of folks in bondage and in captivity. After we find that after Moses got through making excuses, he accepted the will of God for his life. Have you accepted my question this morning? Have you accepted God's will for your life? Mm. God want you to Go set someone free or just to witness someone, cousin Edna, and we still making excuses. God don't want your excuses. He wants your, obe your obedience. We better be about our father's business. Well, Moses, the manumitter, the one that set the captive free, we know was God. But Moses was the instrument used by God. All right. Fisher Mason. All right. Robinsonville coming in the house. Another thing that God did. God granted Moses a mouthpiece, if you will. 
Yeah, Moses the manumitter, Moses the deliverer. One thing he said he couldn't speak clearly. He had was slow a tongue, meaning he couldn't get his thoughts out far fast enough. But understand, if God call you, then he will qualify you. One thing God granted Moses was some additional help. To help, he gave him an orator to help with his speech. Bolivar, how you doing in Ohio? His brother Aaron would be his mouthpiece. He would speak the words to Pharaoh that God gave to Moses, Sister Dale. When we sin and come short of the glory of God, I want you to know we have a mouthpiece that will speak to God on our behalf. The Holy Spirit takes all our moaning, takes all our groaning, and present them to the Father on our behalf. Come here, John, and witness to me. First John 2 and 1 <clears throat> says, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteousness. My, my, my. <clears throat> we have an advocate that will go to the Father and speak on our behalf. I'm so glad that Jesus is my mouthpiece. I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit is my mouthpiece. Sometimes we just like Moses, we get our words all tied up, tangled up, wrapped up, and we don't know what to say. Well, you don't have to know what to say. Good morning, Sharon. Only thing we need to know is God help or Lord have mercy. Well, after the manual middle Moses, the one that set free, had got his mouthpiece, his brother Aaron, then they went on their mission. All right. Moses had had his mission at the burning bush. Exodus 3 and 10. Donna, Don, how you doing? So the prophetess, Moses got his mission at the burning bush when God told him that he was sending him down in the Egypt land. And once he got there, he was to tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. To Moses, that might have seemed like mission impossible. The thing we have to go through in this life may seem impossible. But I've learned in a few years of my life that Paul said in Philippians, and I know I can do all things through Christ which strengthening me. Because when I am weak, God steps in and then I am strong. Christ make the impossible possible. Christ make the undoable doable. Christ make that which is hard bearable. And he won't put more on us than we can bear. He will make your mission impossible possible. And their mission, their mission was to go down in the Egypt and give them this message. All right. So once Moses, the manual miller, got his mouthpiece, Aaron, and he started out on his mission, he gave them God's message. The message from God was the simple one. He said, the Lord God of Israel has told me to tell you, let my people go. All those in the White House and in Congress that are holding God for captive to some political agenda, God is telling you to let his people go. All of you that are planning resurrection against the United States, against the country, the white supremacists, and all those other hate groups, I hear God saying, let my people go. 
leave my folks alone. So the message was this. Go down, Moses, and tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Won't hold you too long this morning, but there's a word from God. And the message was to the monarch. You see, a monarch is a king, a queen, and Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. The Moses and Aaron went on the mission, and the mission was to deliver the message to the monarch. Tell old Pharaoh to let God's people go. Well, let's look at Pharaoh. We find in verse number two that Pharaoh had a heart of stone. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord and neither will I let his people go. Well, that is the problem with so many of us. Our heart is like Pharaoh's heart. It's hardened. We need a heart of flesh, all right? And the only thing that can bust up that heart of flesh, Sister Bob, he'll be glad you can join us, is that we need love in our heart. When you get the love of God in your heart, that's just like having a spiritual jackhammer and it put that jackhammer to that heart of stone and it busted all the pieces and it replaced it with love. And so many of us don't know God. We're doing everything that we big enough, that we bad enough, and that we crazy enough to do. And we blame it on the drugs. We blame it on the alcohol. I was drunk. Uh, I was high. Uh, I was fooled. Well, I hear God say, I am the Lord thy God, and you shall have no other God before me. We bowing to the God of the president. We bowing to the Trump God. We bowing to the uh, abiding God. We bowing to uh, uh, the drug God. We bowing to the sex God. We bowing to the alcohol God. Instead of bowing to the great I, I am, the first and the last, the great I am, Apple and Omega, the great I am, the beginning and the ending, the great I am, the wheel in the middle of a wheel. Stop by to tell you, you bow now or you bow later, but one thing for sure, you're going to bow because I heard every knee, there's a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue must confess. Uh, I'm so glad that if you are a child of God, say by God, and confess him as your Lord and Savior. You've already confessed, and you all ready bow down humbly. I submit myself that I, unto you. All that I am and all that I hope to be, I owe it all to you. So I surrender all unto God. The Pharaoh, the monarch, had a heart of stone. And their request was, we want to hike three days into the wilderness where well, we're going to magnify the Lord. We're going to pray the Lord. We want to go three days into the wilderness to get all the way out of Egypt. There's something unique about the number three. The number three, the number of unity, where the many become one. The number of harmony. It symbolizes God's presence and God completeness. They wanted to go three days, meaning that they would get completely away from, from Egypt. We got to be like the children wanted to go three ways. Be ye separated. Come out from amongst them. 
Yeah, who is a, a, a Pharaoh asking, who is God? But uh, here God said, who is Pharaoh? Well, if you don't know who Pharaoh is, let me tell you. You see, Pharaoh had a headdress, the, the hair piece, uh, a headgear that he wore on his head, had a cobra snake, <coughs> had the picture, uh, the image of a cobra snake on it. What is the significance of the snake? What is the significance of the cobra and the uh, 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 serpent and the ass, the Addison? Well, if you don't know the significance of the snake, come here, Adam, and witness for me. Adam would tell you while he was in the garden, it was the serpent, that old devil, the deceiver that deceived Eve to eat the apple, and he ate of his own free will. Well, if you don't know who the serpent is, I heard John in Revelation 12 and 9 said that old serpent, the dragon, the devil, fought against God, and they was kicked out of heaven. If you don't know, the serpent is the enemy. The serpent is the adversary. The serpent is Satan. The serpent, Reverend Hardeman, is devil. And I hear God telling Moses, go down, Moses, go down. Tell old Pharaoh, you had my people in bondage too long. You got their feet on the neck, sister Joy, too long. You better tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Let them go so they can serve me in spirit and in truth. Let my people go. They're my people. And I'm a jealous God. You don't mess with my people. Go down, Moses. Go down to Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Go down, Moses. Go down to American land and tell the president, let my people go. Tell the Congress, leave my people alone. Tell the white supremacy, let my people alone. Tell the sinner man, tell the sinner woman, let my people go. And when man became separated from God in the garden, God knew that he needed somebody. He needed somebody that can manumit the people, that can release them from their sin, that can release them from their slavery, that can release them from the servitude. He looked all over heaven, wanted to see who could he send. He said, Isaiah, come here. You said you go from me, but Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. I can't go. Come here, <clears throat> come here, uh, David, and go for me. David said, I'm a murderer and adulteress. I can't go. Come here, Solomon, and go down and let free my people. Solomon said, I'm just like my daddy. I can't go. I got 300 wives and a 1,000 concubines. I can't go. They said, come here, Jeremiah, go down for me and tell old Satan, let my people go. Jeremiah said, I would go, but the last time uh, I quit, I went home and I sat on my amazing grave and I said, I shall not be moved. But I heard that the spirit wouldn't let him sit down, that the word of God came to him. It was a burning fire <laughs> shut up in his bone. He just couldn't go. And they looked all over heaven. There's finally a small, still voice 
a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Say, prepare me a body. That was Jesus the Christ. I go down, I go down, reach down, pull man up. I reach up, pull God down, and unite them in God's hand. I, 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 I heard that God told Moses, tell Pharaoh, if you don't let my people go, I'm going to send a pestilence. Well, America, you got God's people. Matter of fact, the world, you got God's people and you won't let them go. And God is sending pestilence after pestilence. He sent AIDS, sent all kind of diseases, and now he sent the virus. But there is a cure for the virus if my people shall call by my name, shall humble themselves, pray and see my faith, turn from their wicked ways, and then will I hear from heaven, I will heal their land. We got to turn from our wicked ways, and that's what Christ came down. I heard God say, go down, Jesus, down to America land, down to Egypt land, Tell, O oh Pharaoh, tell, O oh Satan, tell the Congress, tell the president, let my people go. Don't mess with my people because God will answer. Just like he sent Jesus to save us from the devil, they marched him up the hill called Calvary. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. And for me, he died. He died. He died. The sun refused to shine. The moon fell in blood. Lightning began to flash. Thunder began to roar. The earth began to rock and reel. And they took my God down when they gave up the goat, put him in a grave. But the grave couldn't hold him. You see, old death had turned Jesus' body old to, over to the grave. And he said, oh, grave, do you got him? The grave said, once I get him, I don't let him go. You see, Methuselah died. And I still got him. Jeremiah died. And I still got him. Ezekiel died. And I still got him. And will you hold on to Jesus? Death said. And the old grave said, I got him. And he was still talking about him. Because Saturday night, the grave said, I still got him. But early, early Sunday morning, the grave found that he couldn't hold him. He got up with all power in his hand. And he went down in the hell and preached to set the captive free. And I'm here to tell you that he will set you free. Has he set you free? He will set anyone free that call on his name. Amen. This is Frank Ray. Reverend Frank Ray. Oh, yes. Was satisfied. Oh, yeah. Reverend Frank Ray, move upstairs. Oh, yes. I didn't know I was a prisoner. He's a prisoner. We offer to you Christ, <clears throat> the Son of the living God. He set the cabin free from the grave and he will set you free. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead. He will set you free. We offer you Christ. Give your heart to God and give your hand to one of these pastors, preachers, deacons, prophetess, evangelists online and we'll get you a place where you can worship God in spirit and in truth. That you can move upstairs. Sing it, Franklin. Sing it, Pastor. Oh, yes. not, not all of us are saved. Some of us are still in bondage. Some of us are still in slavery. If you are out of the ark of safety, say this prayer with us. Lord, I'm a sinner. 
I willfully and cheerfully going against their will. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that you died for me. I believe in my heart I confess it with my mouth. If you prayed that simple prayer and you meant it, then you are saved. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. As we kick off Black History Month tomorrow with a message. Go down, Moses. Tell, oh, Pharaoh, let my people go. And then we can move upstairs. Yes, yeah, Brother Nick, we all need Jesus all the time. Amen. Please, ma'am, please, sir, please share this message with your friend. Share this message with your family. And share this message with your network. Thank you so much for those that have already contributed to the ministry. Catch out. New Corinth Tunica. God bless you. God keep you. Next week. Next week, free Sunday. Next week, free Sunday. We have our communion service. I almost forgot the announcement. Uh, there's an announcement. Communion next Sunday. The Lord's Supper. So you got all week to get your elements, your crackers, and your wine. Don't forget, Aaron Henry is taking a, a limited appointment for the COVID 855. 737-6673 and we'll call you. All right. Uh, we'll call them and they'll uh, uh, give you the appointment for the uh, take your COVID vaccine. We'll post this number on your on your website. After you have taken your first vaccine, then you can immediately go in and schedule your your, va uh, your second vaccine. We have some that schedule the vaccine in the uh, what's in the line. All right. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're going to pray right now. We're praying for uh, Dick and Bob Bond and the, uh, we're praying for Leola Conway and for all of those that have suffered loss. Amen. Patricia Conway, glad you could join us. God bless you. Let me slide this over. I'm going to rewind Frank Ray here. Amen. Turn it down a little bit and we're going to pray. Amen. Gracious Lord, we thank and praise you for life. We thank and praise you for health. And we thank and praise you for strength. We come, Lord God, with head bowed down, but heart lifting up. Say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on our soul. We got so much to be thankful for. And we realize that we just don't thank you enough. So we special prayer, Lord God, for Dick and Bob Bond, for Leola Conway, and just so many, Lord God, uh, uh, Pastor Pratt, Pastor Nelson. All right, Lord, just touch just heal as only you can. We turn it over to you, Lord. We trying to figure it out, but you already worked it out. And you worked out this thing called salvation. So bless us. Keep us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday, Communion Sunday, with another exciting message from on high. God bless you is our prayer for you. Amen. Amen. Share this message.